Hey there. So if you're just arriving after nearly two hours of me messing around with this thing, uh, I do want to go over a little bit more gameplay footage, uh, just because I think the um, features of the kit make a compelling argument, and uh, I don't know, I, I want to show off a few more cherry-picked examples, and um, we, can, we can discuss the results afterwards. Uh, but anyway, I think I'm going to mostly leave out the um, Cloud Game Store iterations and the ITA kit. Uh, maybe we'll circle back to that later, uh, but primarily I'm going to be focusing on Funny Playing's 9380 kit, which is their older IPS-based kit. Uh, specifically, it's one of their first ones, and I, ever since they introduced it, I've latched on because I really like the uh, look of the screen, uh, and I basically consider it the gold standard, uh, but that is not to say it's not without its problems. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with my EverDrive because one of the specific games I want to test I don't actually own, uh, but it is a common enough uh, request that, well at this point I probably should just grab one. I'll go ahead and kill some of my lighting so that this captures just a little bit better. Uh, I think I like that better without the glare. Never mind. We'll leave the lighting on. So we're going to take a look at F0 maximum velocity here. Uh, one of the reasons this game in particular gets called out is because this game has a transparent mini map in the bottom. Hmm. Excuse me. In the bottom left corner of the uh, screen here. And to achieve that transparency, like I've mentioned dozens of times earlier, uh, they just flicker the thing on and off real quick. Uh, but one of the um, downsides of this 9380 screen is that they don't really handle the flickering too well. Uh, you get some temporary burn-in, so you can see there's nothing there, and then as soon as the game comes up, the map appears. There's a little bit of flickering at first, but it works itself out pretty quickly. Um, Honestly, I don't see any problems with this. Like, it could be better, sure, but it's not, like, if, if you, if someone didn't point it out to me, it's not something I would have picked up on. The game is totally playable, everything works great, uh, it's just, with that minimap, because, like I said, keep in mind, it's been flickering that whole time, and... Also, like I said, this screen doesn't handle the flickering too well. You end up with artifacts. So what that results in is if you play through a whole series of, um, I don't know, however, however many laps you end up with. I think the specific race is five, but I guess it's more dependent on the time the artifact is on the screen. Either way, we can pause get out of here and you can see the map is supposed to be gone but it's left a flickering artifact on the screen that is one of the problems now it's hardly noticeable in this game because outside of races it's just a black screen so you don't see that um, but if we reboot it sometimes you can see the artifact still on the screen it is pretty much cleared up on mine though so I genuinely don't think it's a problem whatsoever but some units are worse than others, and some of them are an actual problem. Um, that is not the specific game I wanted to draw attention to, but it is one that I was asked to test. So now let's go ahead and see how the uh, alternatives handle this game. Exact same race, probably going to give it the exact same try. And in this specific kit, uh, the true motion feature is enabled already. So you see there's zero flickering of the map. I don't know what I'm doing with this game, someone will have to correct me. Or not, because it doesn't matter, the point is not to win. Da 
that's just a uh, happy bonus. I think, what did we do the other one? A lap and a half? That was a bad precedent. Almost two laps. Two laps exactly. Anyway, give up, and then as soon as we get out of the sub menu, that map should disappear entirely. And it does. No flickering artifacts, nothing. It just works. So, for this specific game, yeah, it's a little bit better. Um, you still got a little bit of flickering on this word, but I think that is by design. That is intended to flicker. Uh, and then of course the blinking is basically flickering but even slower, also intentional. Either way, it seems to perform pretty well. Uh, that's probably the ideal use case for this specific feature. Now let's go ahead and try the Cloud Game Store kit. I do have the Pixel Grid modes on. I don't know which specific one, but it shouldn't make a difference. All the same settings, all the same track, so on and so forth. See, we've got the uh, track overlay up already, and there's almost no um, almost no flickering it looks fine again it's one of those things where if I look for issues I can probably find them but had I not known about it already I likely wouldn't have even noticed with this kit like it's again it's better than the 9380. but that's a pretty low bar when it comes to flickering artifacts with the give up right after this sub menu that map should disappear entirely and ideally we'd be left with no art artifacts uh, but there is a little bit of a flickering artifact so it looks to handle this flickering pretty darn similar to the 9380 kits um, not great I didn't realize that and I think some of my earlier videos I noticed this type of behavior and I might have called it a feature um, there are, whatchamacallit, what do we even have it now? We'll test that in a minute. Um, yeah, I, I might have called that a feature, not realizing that it was just a uh, side effect of how the specific screen works, and I never noticed those uh, lingering artifacts. So, either way, it's less than ideal, but um, in the case of these darn near synthetic tests, of course, I am exposing it to extreme behavior and trying to point out flaws just for the sake of uh, finding things to complain about, I guess. If I were actually playing this game, I don't think this is a problem whatsoever. 
All right, so now we're on, this is the ITA kit from Funny Playing, which is quite a bit newer than their 9380 version of the kit. Uh, but the screen itself is a little bit of a downgrade depending on what specific features you want. The LCD is quite a bit larger physically uh, in that it's kind of more difficult to squeeze into something. Um, in a GBA itself, it doesn't really matter too much because there is plenty of room in there. It does just need a little bit more cutting if you're not using one of their shells. Um, but the actual like size of the image on screen is pretty much one-to-one. -one. The scaling is also pretty much one-to-one. -one. And the performance of the LCD itself is pretty darn similar to AGS 101 LCDs. So, I don't know, it, it works out pretty darn well. Uh, regarding flickering... I see almost none, but I know that the pixel response time of this specific LCD isn't that great. It's actually pretty similar to AGS 101 consoles. It's it's a it's a step up. It's definitely better, uh, but it is still a little bit um, ghosty, I guess. So let's go ahead and give up, and then right after this screen, that mini map should disappear. And if there are any artifacts left over, we will see that right now but there are zero artifacts because this screen isn't isn't getting any burn-in from that. Uh, now, I'm calling it burn-in, but I think burn-in is a little bit disingenuous because it does not actually burn into these screens. Uh, it just, like, it's not permanent. It's, it's a temporary burn-in. It's not like OLED or anything like that, or CRT. Um, I don't know. It looks fine. This is... Of these kits, um, I remember it was only last night that I did whoop, that I did this uh, clean screen here, and I remember comparing these two directly. And I was thinking, I probably even said it out loud that for half the price, this kit performs, you know, basically 90% of the way there in terms of feature set. Um, but in actual like performance and use, it does everything the same or better. Uh, and I, my argument in terms of feature set is that, uh, yeah, it doesn't have configurable pixel grids um, because this doesn't have <laughs> fake pixels, if you will. Um, it, it's one-to-one -one scaling. There's no integer scaling. Uh, so that act that screen door effect you see when you get close to it and you see the black lines between the pixels, that's that's as real as it gets, if it were. Um, so, like, a lot of things that this screen kit is emulating, this screen does naturally. So, while you can turn that emulation off and get uh, super crisp 2x integer scaling, or actually, I don't know if it's more. I have to put this thing under a microscope. I think it's 2x, but it might be 3x. Um, either way, super crisp integer scaling looks really good. Uh, but if you want the pixel grid mode on, then I think this one does it better because it's native. Uh, if you want the um, super crisp fast response time of the IPS LCDs, this one gives you both options. You can turn that true motion feature off and get that super crisp response, but then you also get flickering artifacts, whereas this one just has a slower response time in general, which means you don't need that feature to hide the flickering, but it also means there's a little bit more smearing in some of the faster paced action games, which I think is what um, some people who requested I try this game out specifically were trying to look for, and I hope I captured that data for you I know um, in the original video I did last night of this thing, the 240p test suite, just swapping back and forth between the menus, I could see a difference. It was a very blurry, pixely, smeary mess with true motion on for this kit and just in general for this kit. But it was also like it was also something that was up on screen for a fraction of a second, so it doesn't really matter. It's one of those things where, you know, if you look for an issue, you'll find it. But since we're emulating something that was almost 
considered a defect of the screen originally that was leveraged into a feature. There's going to be trade-offs depending on which specific game you're playing. Uh, so, sure, it is nice being able to turn it on and off, but unless you wire this kit up specifically and have the button controls, it's on all the time and you're stuck with it. So I think, I think it's worth treating the kit as if the default is the only option. Uh, if we want to look at it with the uh, true motion off, then there's almost no point in buying this kit because every other kit supports that feature of true motion off, even though this one performs more like it's on. But I don't know. It is what it is. Anyway, let us move on now. We are going to try the next game. I actually went through my collection and, and grabbed one of my boxed copies of this Famicom minigame um, because I know this one in particular has a problem with the performance on the 9380 kits and then I went to play it and realized uh, it was sticking out of my Game Boy because I had already tried it and just didn't really film the comparison that I wanted to make. So anyway, let's try it out. I'm going to try and do these in the same order again. We're going to start with the 9380 kit. We're going to do single player and uh, I'm going to do a little bit longer on this specific iteration because I want to talk about two of the issues that I'm looking at. Uh, so first, because of some weird scaling thing that they did to make this game fit on this console, uh, there ends up being some scaling artifacts in some places. So I don't, I remember doing a read up on it and it was, um, it was a super fascinating thing, uh, but I don't remember the specific reasons. If I recall correctly, one of the issues is that this game is almost kind of sort of emulated. Um, it's not a direct code port from the original Nintendo Entertainment System game to the GBA version. Um but they did have access to a lot of the original assets and they did make enough changes to do that. But, uh, point is, the original Nintendo Entertainment System, funny, um, NES, had more vertical pixels to work with. Not much, mind, but it did have more. Uh, so one of the uh, workarounds that the devs did was they just squished the game vertically, but instead of uh, recompiling the assets, it's it's almost squished at uh, runtime, if I recall. Uh, so that results in some flickering in a line right along the bottom here that you mostly don't notice in other kits, but go ahead and pay attention to it. It is going to be on the uh, brick floor right about here. Now, granted, I've had this on long enough that the flickering might have uh, temporarily burned into the screen and... and Basically, um, <laughs> and basically making me a fool out of myself, but as soon as it switches scenes, you'll see a line burned in. But there's also a few lines up here at the top, most notably with the clouds. If I leave a cloud in place long enough and then move slightly so it's over, you'll see in the blue there will be like a ghost of the cloud. So we'll do exactly that. Oh, and even the background here. But look at the cloud, look at the look at the floor, you can see it's it's less of a problem if you move through the game quick, like it's intended to. But if you just, you know, sit here and dick around, the artifacts do get worse over time. Ah, oh, and of course the thing keeps going out of focus because it's it's trying to focus on the reflection. That is driving me crazy. Let me set it down and see if that'll help. Oh, wait, I could just lock the focus. Nope, that's the wrong way. Come on. Focus on the screen, not the reflection. Good lord, smartphones are a pain in the butt. Okay. For all the good they do, they're pretty fucking dumb. Um, okay. And I am recording in 4K60. Ah, oh, I shouldn't have moved the camera. Now I gotta focus again. There. 
It is ever so slightly out of focus, but that's what we had to do. Oop. And then I tried playing through the viewfinder, forgetting that there is noticeable latency. Okay. So now that I have that explained, I think I'm just going to go through this level, or try to, Jesus. I swear I'm good at this game, just not when the camera's on. So you can see if I run through this quickly, some specific objects become like a blurry mess because of the flickering. It's such a weird problem to have. Uh, like had the assets just been scaled properly, no one would have ever noticed. But because of the performance of the original screen, most people probably would have never noticed regardless. Uh, so yeah. Totally playable. I don't think it's an issue whatsoever. Uh, and I have shown this off before uh, with that shadow test. I'll, ha I'll leave the object on one side of the screen, then move it to the other, and then you'll see flickering on both sides. That's this exact same thing. Uh, the only difference is this is not a synthetic test. This is just how it looks in the game. But anyway, moving on. Try another kit here. This is again the true motion kit. And the immediate first thing I'm noticing is that the true motion setting is making this game a smeary ghosting mess as I try and play through it. I wonder if I'm gonna have the same complaint when I plug it into the ITA kit. I'm gonna test this game, or this kit twice. I think it's worth turning True Motion off for this. I don't know if it was, um, Blurring in F Ooh, whoops. In F zero. But if it was, I didn't notice it. In Mario, I notice it very, very significantly. So with that off, the exact same world. I see the artifacts a lot more obviously. And by the way, if you see the screen flickering, it is. I still haven't changed the batteries. Um, the runtime is basically what you saw in the other video, plus about another 25, 30 minutes, uh, plus what's in this video. Still hasn't died yet, to its credit. Uh, it is much less a blurry mess. But of course, I see those artifacts a little bit more clearly. Hmm, it's a trade off. I don't know. You tell me. Better on or off? So, oh shoot, I think I just left it off? I don't know, I don't really like that menu design. I think it's counterintuitive. I think for an option that's either on or off, you should just explicitly say that instead of a uh, colored bar here. True motion on. There, now it's on. So it was off, okay. And yeah, now it's a blurry mess again. Oop. The 
you see, as I, as I run through here, um, and I'm actually going fast, if you pause the game, or pause the game, if you pause the footage and just look at the, the screen with the footage paused, you'll have a harder time making out individual items on the screen. That's more or less the ghosting I'm talking about. Uh, whereas, okay, I can't talk and play this game at the same time. Whereas with the um, True Motion off, do the same thing. You'll be able to make it out much more clearly. Here is the Cloud Game Store kit. Same game. No real options to configure, but I do have the pixel grid modes on. And yeah, I don't see any of the artifacts and I'm looking for them. Let's leave it in place a little bit because I did that with the funny playing screen and that gave us some, uh, the 9380 screen in specific, that gave us some artifacts to look at. I think I already explained this before, but I kind of want to go over it again, um, just because I, I just thought about it from a different perspective. But the uh, flickering is effectively, it's being used here as a, um, as a crutch. On other games, the flickering is almost universally intentional, just to give you a... Um, transparency effect but in this game I think it was a more or less an accident an unintended scaling effect with how they decided to scale the game and uh, I just don't think anyone noticed because in the original screens it wouldn't have been evident that that's what was going on um, because the uh, flickering would have produced transparency but only in certain areas and the transparency would have been over oops would have been over the same colored block anyway so you wouldn't have been able to see anything under it it's like if you have two images and one's transparent and you overlay them over the over each other if they're the exact same image you're not going to be able to tell that there's a transparent one overlaid until you move only the bottom one but anyway per Performs perfectly fine on this kit. Not a single problem, I think. I'm looking for artifacts and I don't see them. If I go by real quick, I can see the ground looks kind of shifty. I might have to uh, rewind back and review the footage for that. But again, we're looking for problems. We'll find them. And here is the ITA kit with that same game again. So I said I wouldn't test them, and then I tested them anyway. How's that for consistency? And yeah, this game does turn into a blurry, smeary mess at speed. And of course I am being a little bit hyperbolic. It's not like, it's not bad. It's just compared to at rest, it's not as clear as it could be. Is it a problem? No. I do see some weirdness with the floor and with the clouds when it's moving fast, but I don't know. It seems fine to me. No artifacts, no real, weird effects and uh well just for good measure oh uh, let me do this a little bit of this level oh well okay cool Moving on, and we're just going to do one more system real quick. 
realistically I should have tested it from the beginning, but I didn't. So we'll test it now, and I'm going to start with F0, and then I'll do Mario. Uh, but what this is, just for calibration, this is a perfectly stock AGS-101 console. Literally the only modification I did was I put it in a um, platinum graphite shell. And that was because I had a platinum IQ donor where the top half was in great condition, decent condition, and a graphite donor where the bottom half was in decent condition. And this is an IQ console. Anyway, I just thought it was neat. This is using an OEM AGS-101 screen. It's not aftermarket. If that, for whatever difference that should make, uh, you can already see the mini map, which was effectively designed for this specific screen, is, um, you know, the transparency effect is working exactly as intended. No weird artifacts. Oop. Not saying I was good at the game, but I have apparently lost basically my entire ability to play it in the time I played Mario. I mean, didn't lose much, but... Anyway, we'll give up there, and then right after this screen that map should disappear pretty much entirely, and I think we will find that there is no artifact. And indeed that is the case. We get a little mild flickering of the retire uh, line, which I'm pretty sure is intentional. And then the blinking of retry. Yeah, looks good. I'm fine with it. Now let us try Super Mario Bros. And I'll just leave it in place a little bit slow so you can try and poke around for artifacts, try and give it the uh, worst case scenario, give it a little time to uh, soak, if you will. Uh, not that it'll make a difference with this screen, but, you know, I want to give it a fair shot. Start going. And of all the ones I just tried, I want that. This one is, of course, the blurriest mess at speed. But, no artifact, so... I'll give it that. But, again, you know, you, you look at these objects when it's moving quick, and you can see that there is a little bit of flickering. The cloud, the background, and the ground. Um, I think you'll find that with all of the kits. If you look... Oops, we didn't need to pause that. I was hoping it would skip skippable. I think with all of the kits you'll find similar behavior um, where if you look at those objects they will be flickering and they really shouldn't be. But that's just how the devs decided to make this specific version of the game. Well there you go. I hope that was helpful. I don't I don't know how useful that specific information might be. Um, unless you play a lot of these specific two games and you're deciding which of the which of these five Game Boys you want to play them on. Um, I don't know. It's an interesting look at some edge case scenarios though. I do like how well, these two are the blurry mess. This one sits in between as it will be a blurry mess sometimes. And then these two are Artifact City. 
uh, especially if you let them soak in. So on the blurry mess side of things, we have ITA and the original AGS-101. This one seems to sit in between the two where it is mostly a blurry mess for most of the time, unless you turn that off and then it's an artifacty mess, uh, but you get better pixel response out of it. And then uh, these two on the end, we have Cloud Game Store and then Funny Playing 9380, where, oh, I should not put that on the bottom. That's gonna scratch, because this one has aluminum buttons. Um, we probably don't want this glossy plastic rubbing against anything that'll that's harder than it, which aluminum definitely is. Uh, this glossy plastic is going to scratch if you look at it wrong, and I certainly don't need to encourage the behavior. But anyway, I guess it depends on which specific games you're playing. Um, this could be considered a uh, jack of all trades if you want it to, but you also got to wire it up and you also got to live with some of the other downsides, like A, you're supporting a garbage company, uh, but B, it's literally twice as much as other kits that are almost as good in every way, uh, but better in some specific ways. Or you could go with the tried and true classic, you know, maybe you really like that oversaturated look, which quite frankly I do, and maybe, I think it's worth mentioning, uh, this specific kit. If you look at the bezels on the LCD and then compare them with the bezels on every single other kit I had here, uh, except for this one, you can't really compare the bezels on a different console, you might notice that this screen is just physically larger. I think the larger display looks better. I don't know, it, if you're changing nothing else about the form factor, you're just putting smaller bezels and a larger display in, I think that's a good thing. This is, I believe they call it like a 3.2 inch screen, and again, this is the Funny Playing 9380, whereas everything else is the stock 3.0 inch size, uh, and that is reflected in the bezels. Even between the two Funny Playing kits, you can tell the difference in size. Not so much if I stack one on top of another, but if I have them at the same height, which they are now, uh, maybe you can draw some lines and, and imagine it. Put them head to head there. How about that? Um, and you can just you can see how much thinner the bezels are on the one with the the black border versus the one with the silver border. It has thicker bezels, and there's a bigger gap between the bezel and the screen itself. That's just the way it is. It's a minor thing. I do think it looks better, and I do think it is noticeable in person, um, but unless you have the two side by side, it is a negligible enough size increase that, yeah, you could go either way. But I don't know. It is what it is. I have tried to be as totally unbiased as possible with this specific kit, and I think that has resulted in... Um, me wanting to try and test every possible scenario I can think of, and even a few that I didn't think of, but people suggested to me later, um, and mix all that together, and you get the longest, longest series on backlighting a console I have ever made, bar none, uh, with one exception to uh, all those screens that I just messed up and had to keep taking another swing at. I didn't mess this one up. I just had a lot to test. <laughs> uh, but goodness gracious. Anyway, I'm still working on my write-up. My uh, opinion hasn't changed pretty much at all since uh, that last video. I've had very little time with it outside of these videos. Um, so I haven't formed a separate opinion than what you've already seen. But if price were not a factor, like if every kit was free or every kit was the same price, it didn't matter. You know, I'm spending, I can't build my own Game Boy. I'm buying a Game Boy that someone is building for me. And no matter what kit I choose, they're going to charge me $400 either way. Uh, just 
cover all of our bases went up. Um, for the record, I think that's a terrible price for a modified Game Boy, but I'm just trying to say in this specific what if hypothetical scenario, if price were not a factor, which kit would I still go with? Would I still say the ITA kit is the best bang for buck? Is it the best, you know, feature, mix, so on, whatever? I don't know. I think the choice is going to be between these two still, I think. Uh, the 9380 kit from Funny Playing and the ITA from Funny Playing. But... Uh, it's rough. It's a close call. Because I really like both of these kits, but I like them for different reasons. I think overall, I might still go with the 9380 kit. Of course, things will probably change when Cloud Game Store uh, releases yet another iteration of their uh, quote-unquote drop-in kit that they only say is drop-in because they give you a long enough wire that you can wrap it around this battery terminal. I think that's a horrifying solution and you should just solder the Jesus thing. But despite that, uh, funny playing kits tend to be a little bit better on battery life than the new version of the Cloud Game Store kit. Uh, if I recall correctly, actually don't quote me on that, just, just ignore that. Um, I'll have to refer to my spreadsheet to double check that. I haven't looked at it in a while, it's kind of neglected. Anyway, I think that's all I've got. I'm gonna go work on my spreadsheet now, I guess. Uh, get this stuff uploaded and we'll go from there. Whew. This is more, more work than I've ever put into one of these guys, and I, I hope it pays off. I hate that it took a kit that I just really didn't want to ever look at to look at a kit this in-depth. <laughs> but, I don't know. It is what it is. I'm, I'm not, I don't plan on doing this sort of thing for every kit. Um, maybe... Maybe when I come across another one that might be the one, I guess, as it were. If this one performed better, if the battery life were better, and if the price were half what it was, I'd be willing to look at, look, overlook some of the problems and recommend it. But with the pricing and the battery life, and some of the compromises, I'm just, I'm just not into it. I cannot stand the spacing on the screen. I think laminating it would help, but then you lose the matte finish of the display, and I think it's pretty good. But oh, by the way, did I mention this one has a matte finish display too on a glossy lens? So yeah, they were they were real particular about having a matte anti glare screen and bragging about how um how how such a advanced feature blah 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 and all the other kits are glossy and to be fair these two are glossy but again the 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 uh standard for backlight kits if you will at this point is also a matte display so use this information how you will i hope it was helpful uh, I'm feeling a little bit overloaded. I need to condense my thoughts and, and review them a little bit more. Like I said, I'll go ahead and throw that in the wiki and I'll have it linked on uh, my webpage, which will be linked in the description. Otherwise, um, I hope this has been helpful and I'll let y'all get back to it and have a uh, wonderful night. I mean, you've, you've already spent almost three hours watching me mess around with... Uh, Game Boys and play games poorly, so your night can only get better from there, right? <laughs>